Okay, we're back. We were talking about how to use sewing PCR in order to make a library. So, so far we've done our first reactions uh, in order to generate our fragments. And, uh, my pen is malfunctioning, there we go. Um, in order to generate our fragments in reactions one and two, these are separate reactions, separate tubes. And now we're gonna ac run the actual sewing PCR in order to splice these two fragments together. And we're going to start to see the logic behind the design of those oligos. So uh, it needs to be very clear. Before I go any farther, I think maybe I'll take a quick tangent on the, uh, the logic of those oligos. So we discussed that a little bit beforehand, but just to kind of beat it into the ground, uh, we're going to be focusing on those two center oligos. So we're talking about oligo 2F, so we're going to say 2F and 1R. And these are the oligos that we're using in order to really build the diversity. We're, we're using those to introduce those mutations. And we have, we can section these off and we have these 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3. And I would make a little grid down here saying what each section does. So we're going to say, so purpose. So section one is going to be homology for, so that's going to be really homology for the first round of PCR. So that just means it's going to allow us to bind to our template and run a PCR in order to generate these fragments right here. So section one is all about making these fragments, just allowing that PCR to run. Section two of our oligos is going to be about making your changes. This is what we're using in order to introduce new stuff. So we'll say, uh, uh, I don't know, change. This is where we're adding our ends in. This is uh, where we are switching from one codon to another or four codons to another. So section two is our, our canvas. This is uh, where we get to be creative. And finally, we have section three. We're going to skip down below our little uh, x equals n times 5 thing, and we're going to go to section 3. And then section 3 is, it's another homology region. But it's not used for that first PCR. That second homology region is for the second PCR, or the sewing PCR. And to make things even more confusing, so this section three, it's the five prime. And DNA goes five prime to three prime, which is this direction. And it's going to be the same thing down here. Here's the five prime. DNA goes that way. So why, wh what's, what's going on here? What's going to happen is you have to remember that on the other side, we have a reverse oligo that's going that away and it's going to fill in all of this and it's going to fill in that section three and it's going to give us a three prime here and we can build off of that so it's not the actual this this strand that section three is on the original strand will not actually be extended but it provides the template for the reverse primer to build upon so that we can have something that will be able to overlap with its partner, anneal, and extend. So that was a, a little bit confusing. Let me see if I can try to reword that. So section three is going to provide the template 
for another primer to extend over. And then once that extension happens, once our reverse primer extends over section three, we have a three prime end that can then be used to overlap uh, and extend. So hopefully that little aside didn't totally confuse you, but um, I think we're, it'll become a little bit clearer as we show what happens in the actual sewing reaction. So I'm gonna just move some things around a little bit. So we're going to heat up our reaction. We're going to get our fragments melting. Oh, wrong color. Our fragments are going to melt. And we're just going to focus on our important fragments. So the top and the bottom. And then we can start to map on where our original oligos were. So for our reaction one, we have these sections one, two, and three. And for our reaction two, again, we have the same sections one, two, and three with the mutations. And in section three, I'm sorry, and in reaction one, our original section one doesn't really serve a purpose anymore other than being the, the area. Whoops, I, I misspoke. <laughs> so now we have our section two, our diversity is taken care of. And in our section threes right here, we have homology to the opposite piece of DNA. And since we have three prime ends, these can extend and fill out the rest of our DNA. So all we got to do in order to amplify this is include a couple of oligos. And this product is going to be favored. And we end up with a whole bunch of DNA with ends in place of our X.